This episode is brought to you by Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer. Everything is more exhilarating when you're on your motorcycle, just like your bike is more protected when you choose Progressive Motorcycle Insurance. They offer coverage for your bike, starting as low as $75 per year, and they keep things affordable with discounts like paid in full, multi-policy, and responsible driver. So raise your kickstands and get to quoting at Progressive.com to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. $75 premium is for state minimum coverage. Not available in D.C. Discounts not available in all states or situations. Welcome into the 49er Access Podcast. My name is Sterling Bennett, and today we have something different for you. Today is my guest appearance on The Krug Show with Larry Kruger. We dove into the entire NFL mock draft, seven complete rounds with trades. So without further ado, here is my appearance on The Krug Show with Larry Kruger diving into the NFL mock draft. All right, let's let's get into our mock draft what we'll do is we'll share the screen and I'll let you make the pick since you're oh, my wow. guest. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll go <laughs> through this. We can talk it through, but we'll, we'll go through it and uh, I'll let you make the picks. And I put it, we, we're pro football network, seven rounds. We're going fast and we got the Niners there and that's it. Right. Can we just enter solo draft? There we go. I'm just go. waiting for the, the J, the Jaden Daniels, number one overall pick. And you're like, Oh, the whole, the whole mock draft's busted. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Um, we can do trades if you want. I'll offer you the trades, but I'll let you quarterback this thing all the way through. So we're at 31 before we look at the board, Cleveland's called they're offering 54 85 in their second round pick next year for 31 and 176. I don't love that. Don't love that. So we can reject that. Then Denver's called and they've offered 76 in their first round pick next year. No. Um, I don't love that either. So yeah, no. let's reject. So now let's look at the board. And Johnny Newton is on the top <laughs> yeah, of the board. <laughs> I, think, uh, I, think Dane, I think Dane Brugler had him going to the Niners in his mock draft this morning for the athletics. So it's very yeah. fitting that he's on there. Well, it's funny, too, because I had uh, Baldy on um, a couple weeks ago, and I said, Baldy, there's a bunch of different defensive linemen in this draft. Give me the guy that you like. And before I could even get out the question, he's like, Johnny Newton, uh, (laughs) Illinois. He loves Johnny Newton. So that's from Baldy. But here's the board. You got Michael Penix sitting there, which means you could trade probably back because if somebody wants Penix, there's Adonai Mitchell. Keon Coleman's got a big catch radius. You got the BYU offensive tackle, Jordan Morgan's there. Uh, Darius Robinson, who was the practice player of the week. You know, in a lot of ways, Darius Robinson, when I look at the highlights of him, I'm thinking, I see a little Alden Smith there. But he's another guy that, that you know, he was he was voted the defensive practice player of the week at the Senior Bowl. McConkie's yeah. there. TJ Tampa is a very physical, hard-hitting, big number one corner. I'm a huge fan of this kid, Zach Frazier okay. from West Virginia. Um, that was another thing Baldy said. Baldy said, you don't have a great offensive line unless you have a great center. And he thinks that's, that Frazier is a great center. I do, too. He's got the wrestling background. This, you know, he's, he's a 4.0 GPA. He's dominating inline blocker. So he's intriguing to me. Max Melton is intriguing to me. Rook Aurora is intriguing to me. Probably the best um, name in the entire draft, by the way. Yeah, I mean, just it's the idea of Greg, <laughs> just the idea of him making Greg uh, say yeah. that every day, you know, every week is going to be awesome. Edger and Cooper is a great player. I'm an A&M fan. I watch A&M every week. Uh, he's a terrific player. He can play Mike. He can play the weak side. You know, do you need a replacement for Dre Greenlaw? Then there's Leggett. There's Rake Straw. So, I'll, but I'm going to defer to you. I'm going to let you make the pick. So, what do you, what do you, what direction do you want to go here, Sterling? So, I think you have to get into the mind of Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, right? They like to build trenches out, and knowing Malik Collins is on a one year deal essentially, and they have Javon Hargrave locked up, and just lost Eric Armstead, quote unquote, lost Eric Armstead, letting him go to Jacksonville. Um, the Johnny Newton pick is kind of the how is he still on the board at pick 31? Um, many people. He's very quick. He's very quick. Um, 
sometimes you have to ask yourself though, is it worth getting a receiver or getting a Kingsley Sua Mateo or a Jordan Morgan and then going and trying getting a Chris Jenkins or a Michael Hall uh, in the second round to, I think San Francisco had a top 30 visit with Michael Hall, who I'm sure won't go until round two or three, but um, like Newton, I think is the bona fide, like if he's there, he's a blue chipper, probably the, He's at least in conversation, if not behind Byron Murphy. Some people have him above Byron Murphy for the best defensive tackle in the entire uh, draft class. Murphy uh, went two picks before, by the way, to the Lions. Right, which is a great spot for him next to Aiden Hutchinson out there. Uh, and DJ Reader. They just had a DJ yeah. Reader inside. So like, the one thing that does bother me about Johnny Newton is, I guess bother is probably too aggressive of a word, but he isn't the greatest run stopper. But, I mean, he's super quick off the line. He's a great pass rusher. And when you talk about the Niners wanting to get back to just read and react defense, go and get the quarterback, don't have these stunts involved, just go, essentially. Um, I think Johnny Newton, if he's at 31, I think the Niners have a hard time saying no to him. Um, But I also wonder, it's an interior defensive tackle. And... I don't know if the Niners would value that at 31. Like the last time they've taken an interior guy in the first round has been Eric Armstead. And that was pre Kyle Shanahan, I believe. Like well, there was well, some Ken, Thomas. Kinlaw, Kinlaw. Oh, you're right. I'm so sorry. Yes, you're right. You're right. Kinlaw. Yes. So, oh, man, like. I mean, here's I the thing. Makes Hargrave sense. doesn't, Hargrave doesn't play the run. So what is the real need inside? Right. I think the guy that you get inside has got to be a two-way player. He's got to be yeah, he's got to be like a BY, you know, Bryant Young. He's got to be a guy that, you know, yeah, he's a, he gives you some pass rush, but he plays the run. Um that to me, you know, Michael Hall, I know the board, you know, we get especially as we look at these mock drafts and we look at the board, we get into like perceived value, you know. Right. Like what is value? Value for anybody it, you know, if you somebody comes to your home and prices, you know, whatever carpet, the value the value is from the price that they give you first to the price that you pay, right? I mean, that's where you perceive value. It's going to cost you five thousand for the carpet, and right. then you say, well, you know what? Though we're going to cut this and that, and we're going to give it to you for three. And then it's right. like, hey, wait a second. So you, the perceived value is that you save two thousand dollars. But did you really, or was was the first price kind of a high price? And I I, mean, I mentioned that just because all these games we're talking about prospects here. These are people evaluating people. It's always problematic, and and it's an imperfect science. Personally, I I think Michael Hall might be better than Johnny Newton. And Michael Hall led the nation this year in pass rush win rate at defensive tackle. Um, I just watched you know, Ohio State Michigan the other day, and this guy's firing into the backfield. I mean, he ran four seven six. Now he's not he's not Aaron he's not Aaron Donald running four six right. eight. But four seven six at th- at three hundred pounds is moving. Um Michael Hall, according to the stopwatch at least, ran the same time as Braden Fisk and is the fastest defensive tackle in the class. So I know the perception is is that Newton's better, but I don't know. I mean, I watch Newton and I've watched I've watched Michael Hall and I think they're very comparable players. They're both that kind of sawed off, shorter, undersized, pass rushing interior tackles that are just a menace. They get their hands on you and they're technicians and they're fast and they're, you know, tenacious. I think they're very similar players. I kind of prefer Hall to Newton because of the health. He's got a cleaner health deal and he's also younger. He's Newton, uh, Michael Hall's not going to be 21, I believe, until like June or July. Uh, So he's one of the youngest players in the draft. And I realized people would, if you took Johnny Newton here, people would say, oh, he fell to you. Great pick. Yeah. And the mocks would give you an A. If you took Michael Hall here, they'd be like, oh, reach. Um, You know, he's, he's, uh, you know, you get a C minus because you reached. But in reality, I don't know that there's a huge difference. They have different strengths and weaknesses, but I think they're very comparable. It's my way of just saying it's like, you know, the board is the board. But like as Belichick pointed out today, 
every team in the NFL's board is going to be different right. based on the way their scouts rank these players. So uh, just food for thought. But that all being said, what direction would you like to go? You want to go Johnny Newton? You want to, you want to, you want to go with, uh, you know, one of these other players, a receiver, an offensive lineman, a corner. What are you thinking? So I think if you were picking at 20 and Johnny Newton was there, I think you'd take him. I think Michael Hall, who I do like a lot, he's 6'2", 299 pounds. He's put on about 20 pounds since leaving Ohio State, so he's bulking up for the draft. He has the instincts to be a good run defender, but he just isn't there yet. Um, now, Chris Cosera can mitigate some of the issues a lot of these guys have, but if you're at 31 and, and Johnny Newton is there, and I would not be scared to leave a player like Kingsley Suomatea or – or Jordan Morgan on the board for somebody else. Like I would not be afraid to do that, knowing that Blake Fisher is down there and Cooper Beebe's there. And uh, I know you like Zach Frazier on the interior. Like those guys aren't tackles. I'm also not of the mindset that San Francisco needs a tackle. I would not be surprised if they go guard in this draft or try to improve center. Um, I think it's as simple as go Johnny Newton and you can figure everything out later because I think you have the blue chipper you want. Um, and it also means that you don't have to apply or try to get a defensive tackle in the third or fourth round. You can go get the guy who I think many teams would have inside their top 15 of their big boards. We'll go Johnny Newton. We're here. We are. You, I, I think it's, I think we've decided Johnny Newton. Yes, sir. So they start with Johnny Newton, and now we're racket, rocketing through the second round. We're down at 63. Denver's called. They are offering 76 in their third for 63 and 251. Not, uh, I don't not, like that. Not loving that, so we'll reject no. that. So that was so, the only trade. So now we're on the board here at 63, right. and here's who's the best players according to this mock. Cameron Kitchens, the safety from Miami, who I'm a big fan of his. Ben Sanat, tight end from K-State, big fan of his. Chris Jenkins, the defensive tackle from Michigan, whose dad was Chris Jenkins, um, played yeah. for Carolina. Yeah, and the legend. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and also this Chris Jenkins is a, you know, was on the top of the Bruce Feldman freaks list. I mean, he's oh, a yeah. workout machine. There's Cedric Gray, if you're looking to replace uh, Dre Greenlaw, and Cedric Gray is – is um, my favorite linebacker in this draft. Then there's Braden Fisk, who I thought the workout was amazing. I mean, I don't know if he's an every down guy, but he could be a pass rushing rotational player that Kaserik would really love. Uh, there's Roman Wilson, if you want to go receiver. They did bring in Brandon Dorless from Oregon. He's about 285, and he's kind of, he might, you know, resuscitate their NASCAR package. He's kind of a DN, D tackle, you know, tweener. Uh, Junior Colson, there's Ricky Pearsall right there. Marshawn Neeland, they brought in Neeland. A lot of people like Cole Bishop. Mahogany's a brawler at guard. What do you think? Mason Smith is was a five star. Mason Smith's one of the interesting guys in this draft. He was a five star recruit out of high school, and never could quite get it going at right. um, at LSU. But I mean, you're talking about six six, three hundred and ten pounds, fast. Uh, Mason Smith, he wore number zero, uh, <laughs> but he's an amazing talent. I'm a big Blake Corum fan. Roger Rosengarten, a lot of people feel, is a very a plug-and-play uh, offensive tackle. Jeremiah Trotter's a great linebacker. Um, the, the the Yale kid's got eternal, you know, long arms. What do you think? Who, what direction do you want to go? You, you've got a defensive tackle. Do you want to go offensive line? I can also kind of look at e any position you want if you want me to here. Yeah, let me see what we have at offensive line. Because okay, I think so. at this moment, when you've got Newton, you have probably at least three of the, the better pass rushers in football. And you have two of them on the interior where Johnny Newton probably is at least a top 20 interior pass rusher, I believe, coming out of college. Like he's that okay, good. At center, you got Cedric Van Praan, uh from Georgia. Tanner okay. Bordellini. I'm a big fan of this kid, Bo Limmer from Arkansas. Arkansas. He's a 6'5", six, five, oh, yeah. six, five, uh, center. Okay, those are the top centers. The top guard, Christian Mahogany, who's a at, wore 73 for Boston College, total brawler. 
Uh, Mason McCormick was a phenomenal player at South Dakota State, and then he went to the Combine and kind of showed that he was big time. Zinter, a lot of people think is nasty, and he had some injuries at Michigan, but a lot of people love Zinter. Ladarius Henderson is is got some pulling capabilities. And then at tackle, you've got Rosengarten, you got the Yale kid, Amagaji, you got Notre Dame's Blake Fisher. And then I kind of like this group down here. I like Javon Foster from Missouri. I like Garrett Greenfield a lot from South Dakota State. I like Christian Jones from Texas. I like Caden Wallace from Penn State. I think there's Frank Crum, the ginger from uh, Wyoming. This kid from Howard, Anim Donkwa, is crazy good. He's a he's a he's kind of like uh, the guy that went to the Browns last year, Daywan Jones. He's like six eight, okay. three sixty. And he's, but he's from Howard and it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a year or two of, of, um, you know, tutelage there. But I mean, he is a monstrous offensive tackle. So what do you, what do you think? You want to go offensive tackle? Um, tight, the best tight end is Ben Sinat. That one is best receiver is Roman Wilson. <laughs> Pearsall's there. So um, I'm of the mindset that you can, like, I really like Ben Sinat, but. I also believe that Roger Rosengarten, I know he's, a, I think Joe Staley is uh, training him at Washington. They were just at what the, the local pro day for them and had a personal workout with him. Um, and they were like, I think it was Chris Forrester and John Lynch stayed after the workout to talk to him privately. So they've shown a lot of intrigue with him. I also like Blake Fisher a lot from Notre Dame, 6'5", 315 pounds, 34 and a quarter inch arms, um, really doesn't have many weaknesses. So because of that, I, I don't think we need to go tackle here. Um, and I also think that, like, I hate to say they don't value a tackle or the interior in the second round, but receivers really intriguing. And, and real, honestly, even cornerback too. Like, I like the receiver, they're, they're so deep at receiver in this class. But when I see Kalen Carson up there, like that, I don't know how much you know about Kalen Carson, Larry, but... Of the well, I love his teammate. Draft. I love Malik Mustafa, the the, okay. the the safety from Wake. I haven't studied Carson that much, but I probably should. 5'11", 190 pound, lean, it says well-sized frame, good natural strength, torrid so, foot speed. I don't know what he ran, but obviously he ran fast. So the reason why he, there really isn't much on him is because he had a leg injury and he hasn't been involved in a lot of the scouting process during, during the draft process, um, but he's got a pretty good size. I mean, he can play outside. He plays really fast. He accelerates well, a really good transitioner, um, good tackler, likes to run defend, gets physical at the line of scrimmage. Um, one thing about him that will knock him down some people's draft board is he's kind of grabby, but so is Mooney Ward, where at times he gets called for a holding call downfield. Or the, I, I think at one time after the Vikings game, Mooney Ward had the most illegal contacts in football. So Kalen Carson reminds me of that kind of player. Um, he can play man. He can play zone. Uh, he doesn't really have the ball skills you like in a cornerback to convert picks, um, but he can certainly lock down a receiver if he has to. Um, I think if you I was, you, would you rather have Carson than Pearsall, the Florida receiver? Probably not because I see Mike Sainer still down there, and I'm in love with him at Michigan. So I probably yeah, would he's go. Small, but he was the team captain. Yeah. Sainer still is a great little player. He had the key. I, he had the clinching interception in the national championship game. I think if you're the Niners and you retain Ayuk, you have a thumper in Debo who, at times, doesn't always stay healthy. Right. You have Ayuk back, who is a great separator, and I think against Kansas City, in one thing that really frustrates me with the Niners is they tend to only play three receivers all year long. And I think Pearsall could break that trend where let's say Debo goes down in the big game. You'd have two really good separators in the playoffs or the Super Bowl against Kansas City. Um, I think if you want to get nuts and just give Purdy everything for one year, I think you'd go Pearsall and just say, you know what, Kyle, all the chips are in. Go get me Ricky Pearsall. Let's do it. We'll go Ricky Pearsall. You, you comfortable with that? I'm good. All right. Ricky Pearsall, round two. We're off to round three. They don't pick again until num number 94. So far. And let's I've, see, at 94, the Vikings hmm. are offering 108 and 129 for 94 and 215. Would you move back? You know, I don't hate that. Yeah, I don't hate that either because 
you're consolidating picks and you're only really moving back what 14 spots um 94 to 108 and you're and getting you're getting you're ticket. moving up you're moving up you know from 215 to 129 now we can hide this real quick and see who's on the board and i think they pick at what they, they pick at 124 132 135 like they're back to back to back pretty quickly in the fourth round yeah they pick again at 124 132 yeah. and 135 so they have so, three picks coming so and you they're have here four at 94. Picks in like a six pick span that from 124, 129, 132, 135. You can load up if you really wanted to in the fourth round. I mean, um, this is why this draft is exciting for the Niners in a lot of ways because they do have some picks and they do have an, a way to, to really dramatically improve their football team. Yeah. At 94, Mason Smith is still here from LSU, the big defensive tackle. Um, they looked at Braylon Allen. You know, if you want a big running back, and there he is. Is Johnny Wilson a receiver or is Johnny Wilson an outstanding flexed out tight end? If they really thought that he was an outstanding flexed out tight end, he might be interesting. Amagaji is a the longest arm tackle. You know, he had a quad injury this year, uh, so he didn't play. But, um, you know, a lot of people feel like Amagaji is a absolute moldable ball of clay. Uh, Austin Booker is an underrated pass rusher. This Texas Tech safety, Dadrian Taylor Demerson. I don't know if you saw him, but he's just a hyperactive tackle machine. You got a one technique defensive tackle in McKinley Jackson there. Uh, so, Jaden Hicks is a hitter. Yeah, I was going to say, Andrew Jayden Phillips Hicks is, is a really good intriguing. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot uh, of guys there. I mean, Mustafa, they say they need a safety. Mustafa's there. Uh, Bordellini is a good center. I mean, there's some good Malik Washingtons there, McCormick. What what are you thinking? What are you thinking right here in, in uh, the third round? Or do you want to go back and take that trade and move down and, and garner more picks? So it does look like that Mike Sainer Steele was off the board, if, if I'm correct. It looks like he's gone. Let's um, see. Which would Mikey lean me. went to who did he go to? Is he gone? Let's see. Yeah, he, he went the to the Lions. Lions. Man, oh. they got Murphy and Sanders Steel. <laughs> I mean, you know, the Lions man. are coming, man. I mean, the Lions are coming. Oh, yeah. And well, they had I'm, a I, I was a big fan for a big fan of Blake Corum too. I think Blake Corum to me reminds Bears. me a lot of Emmett Smith. I think he's a star. Wow. Okay. Um, I love Blake Corum, but he's going to the Bears there, so he's out. So um, I do wonder now that Mike Samer steals off the board, if he can see the cornerbacks for a second, yeah. do the Niners get a little worried that they like Andrew Phillips a lot? He isn't the greatest. They worked him out. Kyrie Jackson's um, a six, three, six, I, four. I love, I love Kyrie you know, Jackson. Corner. Uh, Cam Hart's a big corner. Chow Smith Wade is small, but he's a tremendous corner. Daquan Hardy's interesting in that, He's a small corner, but he's an elite return guy. Might be the best return guy in the okay. country. And if you're looking for, you know, a return guy with the new return rules, they also met with Elijah Jones from Boston College. He's got great size. Um, it's a it's a good – I love this kid, Willie Drew, from Virginia State on day three. But um, but Andrew Phillips has got great workout numbers. I mean, you could go corner here. Um, so with, the kid, with the kid that went one pick before Renardo Green was one of my favorites. He went one pick before to the Titans. I love Renardo Green from Florida State. So what does worry me is if you're the Niners, can you afford to, and I, and I get the advice that gave them. They just signed Rocky Sin. I'm not a big Rocky Sin fan by any means, but to me, there is a concern of what do you want to do at cornerback? Do you want Lenore playing inside? Do you want to playing outside? Um, you do run the risk at this moment. If you don't find another nickelback, you don't have one now. Is that maybe an overstated worry? Potentially. Um, Andrew Phillips. You makes, trade this pick to the Browns for Greg Newsom. Yeah, and that's certainly, I think that was a rumor early on um, in the off season, but Andrew Phillips is there and he's 5'10", 191, hyper physical, sometimes yeah, too grabby, but he's hard to beat vertically. Uh, I, I think he's one of the best processors at the cornerback position in this draft. Um, he can cover in shadow, I think, better than Sam Steele could. Um, my only concern with him is that San Francisco likes cornerbacks that can tackle. And Andrew Phillips just, in my opinion, is a horrible run defender. And 
I would have Kyrie hard- Jackson is six four. I mean, he's a big corner if you if you wanted you know an edge setting presence there. And they right. and they that's what they had in Emmanuel Mosley. And let's be honest, everybody talked about Chase Young and this and that, but really one of the big lose you know the big guys that they missed this year was was the corner. They missed Emmanuel yeah. Mosley and his ability yeah. to set the edge on the corner. So I'm going to take our chances here because I really do want Kyrie Jackson. He's six foot three, 200 pounds, almost 33 inch arms. Knows how to use his body. Um, physical tackle at the line of scrimmage. Um, he's a guy that doesn't just tackle. He loves to tackle out of Oregon. Um, you can argue he's one of the best cornerbacks in this class at invading space of a receiver. And he's really good at the catch point. So because of that, I think he'll be there in, what is it? 12 picks. I think trading yeah, I mean, back, he, there's four, there's three corners that are rated higher than him that would probably come off the board, at, you know, first in this mock. I think trading back would be the smartest move with the Vikings. So what, okay. what was that? Fourteen picks, I think. Let's do it. We'll do it. We'll accept that trade. Fingers crossed. Uh, Kyrie Jackson went. <laughs> okay, so now we're at one hundred and eight. Okay, but you, you still have Kyrie Jackson went, but you still have Andrew Phillips if you want to take right. Phillips there. Flex your business with an American Express Business Gold Card. You'll earn four times membership rewards points on your top two eligible spending categories, like transit and electronics, each month on up to 150K in combined purchases per year. Plus, you can now earn three times membership rewards points on flights and prepaid hotels booked on AmexTravel.com. Terms and points cap apply. Learn more at AmericanExpress.com slash business dash gold. Amex Business Gold, built for business by American Express. I think um, let's see all Mason Smith's there. Your guy's still there. Jaden Hicks, um, Hicks is still there. Jaden Hicks is still there. Mustafa, if you want a safety, he's still there. Hmm. Um, For the sake of just the Niners having a visit with the guy and seemingly liking him a lot, and I think San Francisco would like a in a division that has Lockett and JSN and Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, um, depending on what the Cardinals do in this year's draft. Uh, I think getting Phillips makes a lot of sense now. It will give Lenore the flexibility to go inside and outside. Phillips wouldn't have to play on base downs all the time. I think Yadam could fill in there on the outside if you need to. So I would go Phillips here at 108. And I think you get good value there. All right. So we went Phillips and now we're sitting at 124. Okay. Um, you know, if you go all, you know, Cade Stover, the tight end from Ohio State, Tall tight end, Jaden Hicks. If you go safety, Wazoo. Um, you know, there's some interesting players. Malik Washington is there all day. Ray Davis. I don't know if he, he's a he's from San Francisco. Uh, Ray, Ray Davis from Kentucky is a phenomenal running back. Theo Johnson, who has some really good workout numbers from Penn State. Rice's kid. Somebody uh, mocked Jared Wiley, the TCU tight end, to them. He's on the board. Uh, the Bo center Bo Limmer is there. Chow Smith Wade. You know the Niners brought in Jacob Cowing from Arizona. Yeah, Cowing's interesting. He's a good route runner. He's not the biggest guy, but he runs in the four threes. Um, that's an interesting one. Javon Baker. If you want to go receiver, he's there. You know, so there's a lot of interesting ones. Jonah Ellis, I think, is one of the most polished pass rushers in this draft class. That's Luther Ellis's kid. One of his kids. And if you watch Utah, I mean, this guy's got a nasty, ridiculous spin move where he can spin, you know, outside, inside out, outside in. Uh, Jonah Ellis is a force off the edge. He's a little smaller than you'd want, you know, in the, in, you know, the Niners usually have guys around 265, 270. He's more like 250. But um, what are you thinking here at 124? Or is there a spot you want me to look at? No trades are being offered. I think my eyes are taking me towards Jaden Hicks because the Ufunga situation is so up in the air currently with the injury. And if he'll be there, like I in real, like if this was draft Big day, safety, like, 6'3", 202. Like round two, I, I have a firm belief Jaden Hicks will be taken in early, early day two. Um, kind of a throwback, six foot five. Uh, he, he's, you know, he's six one. Hard hitter. Like when you talk about an enforcer on defense, he just likes to thump. And it's like, you put that guy in this defense and there is a conversation to be had of, you know, is he a strong safety? Is he a free safety? 
Um, he can play special teams. He'll get nasty and dirty with tight ends and receivers. Like he's just unafraid to play football and you know, come down into the box. Um, he's also really good in coverage. Like if there's fear, and, and, and I don't know how you feel about this, but with the Ufunga situation and all the reports of kind of have his job back and the injury, like the maybe can't repay him or, or, or resign him next off season when he's up. Like I think Jaden Hicks, you give me Jair Brown and Jaden Hicks in this secondary, you got two thumping playmaking safeties behind a really good defensive line. That's really intriguing. Um, but we also haven't taken an offensive lineman yet. And I'm sure fans are like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so, um, I mean, but you know, there's some good ones here. I mean, I, I'm, yeah. I love Javon Foster. Now I've okay. watched him extensively. He was, he was really good at the senior bowl. He's got huge long arms. He's a perfect, you know, him in Greenfield. Greenfield is one of my sleeper guys as well. He, he's a perfect swing tackle. He's played the right side. He's played the left side. Um, he was incredibly athletic. Yeah, I think he had, in fact, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I think Garrett Greenfield at the Combine set the offensive line vertical record with like 37 and a half inch vertical. Jeez. <laughs> so, I mean, that's an amazing thing. And they, you know, they won two, the last two FCS national championships. I'm a big fan of Greenfield, big fan of Foster. Uh, Christian Jones, I thought looked really good in the one-on-ones, yeah. um, I like Christian Jones you know, at senior bowl and they, they brought in Caden Wallace to me, all, any of those four guys, I, I kind of like them in that order too. Okay. Foster, then Greenfield, then Jones, then Wallace. Um, but you know, that's the offensive tackles. Um, and yeah, Limmer's there. He's a good, really good center. Um, you know, tight end is still a need. Uh, you know, defense overall, you know, the, to me, the edge rushers are real interesting here. Javon Solomon led the nation, I believe in sacks. From he had Troy. 16, yeah. He had 16 sacks in 14 games, 19% pass rush win rate this year. Really good. He, yeah. He's incredible. As he's is Jonah foot. Ellis. Solomon yeah, he, six I mean, foot. These, these are smaller guys. The guy that I really yeah. love too is Muhammad Kamara. Who's oh, down here at Colorado yes. state. I think, you he know, is, six, one, two, two fifty five, two sixty, yes. but, Mara is a crazy athlete. If this kid were six three or six four, he's already off the board, probably yeah. play first round. He had a big year. The only thing, the only thing down on the guy is he's six one and a half. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so there's edge rushers that are intriguing, but this is kind of where you have to, I think, start to play the board as best player available. Right. I agree. Um, yep. But what do you think? I mean, you're you're making the picks here. Uh, you can have anybody you want. I can I can show you any position you want. What are you let's looking go, at? Let's go to guard for a second. I know Limmer's there, but Coleman. Brandon okay. Coleman from TCU. There's the big A and M guard, Layden Robinson. Isaiah Adams from Illinois. Zinter is. Yeah. I think Zinter might be a really really good player. He had some injuries, but. Zinter was a high recruit. He's a brawler. He's tough. I think, I think Zinter he was, might have been one of the I, one of the Wolverines' best offensive linemen. Well, I, I believe he was a player that got hurt in the national title game. I, I believe, and then like the entire crowd was like, "Zach, like the, the team loves him. Um, he's a great leader in that locker room at you know Big Blue." Um, let's see centers for a second because I do think. He limp- Bo Limmer is a 6'5 center, 6'4. They list a mere 300 pounds, but he did it in the SEC. Yeah. And he's he's a tough guy. He's a really tough guy. Now, Charles Turner is really, really strong from LSU. Um, the Penn State center is supposedly pretty decent. Nick Gargulio from South Carolina is considered to be a top tier center. Um, so I have a player watched named every Hunter single one of these guys. On. Hunter Norzon yeah. from Penn State. Uh, he's he's right there. High IQ, six year starter or six year player. Um, good athlete, good versatility, good size. Inconsistent run blocker. Like the highs are really good and the lows are like, what's going on here? Well, you're a six year player at Penn State. The one thing I like about him is that he just like with what he does with his body. Like he just 
get get a body on somebody get a hand like he'll be on his knees and he'll just put a hand up and go i, I gotta get contact with somebody the issue is he cannot pick up a stunt to save his life now mm. in that same breath thank god aaron donald's gone <laughs> because it would be over um but you said go best player available i i, I agree Jaden hicks think, is still there too by the way i i think Jaden hicks is just found money if he's in the fourth round for san francisco all right, we can go. We'll go Jaden Hicks at 124. And now here you are at 129. Now, this is just a matter of a lot of people feel like the Niners are going to consolidate their picks. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a little bit in a different mindset. Why? Because to me, if you go around the team, you say, okay, if you could, I, if you could make an ideal situation, what would it be? You know, you, if, to me, the more the merrier. I mean, like in this, I would make this move. I would okay. move from one twenty nine to one thirty six and pick up two hundred three. There's other people that would say, "Oh, you don't need more picks," but to me, every one of these picks is like, it's like you could be landing Brock Purdy. It's a bite of the apple, and um, who cares if you have a little bit? You have one or two more rookies than you than you want. You might get to camp, and there might be an injury. So. I'm, right. I'm I'm kind of a believer, and I've been this way since uh, Green Bay last won their Super Bowl, and they had like 26 guys on season-ending IR, and they still won the Super Bowl, <laughs> whatever year that was, against Pittsburgh. To me, it's like depth. If, you know, you can never – it's football. I mean, you can never have enough depth. So I – unless there was somebody that I just – let me see. I'll hide this. If, if Unless there was somebody at the top of the board that I just had to have, and I just don't see it there. I would make that trade. I would trade from 129 to 136 and pick up so 203. You, so you'd be at what? You'd be at you'd be well, you'd, at you'd be at 132. You're you're picking anyway in a, the 136. Yeah. yeah. So you and still have, you're getting that okay. late Yeah, you're just hmm. get, it's a 2 for 1 basically. It's right. a 2 for 1 in the middle of the draft. To me, that's a very safe trade and I think I would do it. Okay. Uh, I I will uh, ride with you on this one. All right, now we're at 132, right. and you have another offer. The Ravens are offering 146 and 165 for 132 and 251. Um, you do pick in two more picks. so and, and I believe 251 is your last pick. Yeah. So there really isn't – and you pick at 215. So I believe I, – I think we still have that pick. Um let me see the offensive linemen, though, because I don't want to miss out on, you know, some interior guys that could be hits. Um, is Bo Limmer still there on the board? Yes, I think he's, he's the it. highest rated center. I think you got to dig him. He just, he's too good. Okay. So Bo Limmer, now you're picking again at 135. We haven't taken a tackle. Let's see, tackle-wise, Javon Foster's still there. Garrett yeah. Greenfield's still there. Caden Wallace, Christian Jones. Those guys are there. Frank Crum, Anim Donqua. Uh, these guys are all all still there. That and I kind of think this is where this tackled. And I even like the Maryland kid, Gottlieb Ayadaisy. I don't know if you okay. saw him work out at Indy, but he's he's a, a nice prospect. They list him later, but you know, and then I'll tell you the other kind of guy that I'm keeping my eye on is I'm a big fan of Austin Reed. The you quarterback. go quarterback still? I, I I would. I mean, I, okay. I saw, I've watched this kid read, and I think he's really got the goods. I mean, he was a lacrosse player. He's a you know he's a four four student. They say this guy just lives in the film room. He's got a lot of the same traits that Brock Purdy had. Now I don't know that he's going to make the team, right? I don't know. Right. You know. Um, are you going to cut Brandon Allen? Are you going to cut Josh Dobbs? Right. But this is the kind of kid that I think um, Sterling could look really good in the preseason and force them to cut one of those veteran quarterbacks. I really kind believe like that Reed, was a couple years ago. Yeah, I think Reed, like, you know, a lot of people love Joe Milton. A lot of people like Michael Pratt. Right. A lot of people like Carter Bradley. A lot of people like Sam Hartman. They're all sitting there right there. Devin Leary's got a hose. Yeah. Absolute hose. So but to me, I'm, Austin Reed is special. And so I would try to use one of these, not necessarily right here, but I would try to use a pick in the, let's see, let's see the picks here. The Niners have 135, 136, 176, 203, 211, 251. 
So you still have six picks. Probably when you get to 203, that's when I would probably consider Austin Reed. He's listed at 222 on here. Let's look but, at it. Um, Go ahead. You're good. No, I was just thinking, you know, at this point, though, it's it's literally best player available. And there's some interesting guys. Javon Baker is still there. Isaiah Davis, the running back for South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits running back. He's let's a look good at, player. Let's look Zinter's at running backs still there. Running backs. Okay, here we go. It'll, it'll be the Kyle Shanahan and me. So Jalen Wright, a lot of people think Jalen Wright maybe is the best back in the draft. There's Garendo, who my buddy Tony Pauline said the Niners <laughs> were going to use a third round pick on. He runs in the four, high four threes from right. Louisville. So, he might be a fullback. There's so, Tyrone Tracy, who was a receiver, who a lot of people think sleep a sleeper. Blake Watson's very good. My sleeper guy is this guy right here, Amani Bailey okay. from TCU. So I'm a big Dejan Edwards guy from Georgia. Yeah, I like and, him too. I really like him. Um, the one thing, and if Tony Pauline is correct in the fact that San Francisco was thinking of taking Grendo on day two, um, I think Isaac Grendo, who was comped to Marie Mostert a lot, um, I don't know if that's who he'll be in the NFL, but – He's got 4-3 speed. He's not like out of a cannon fast. He just kind of builds up to it naturally. Um, right. He wasn't he 20... even necessarily the best back on his team. No, he wasn't. Um, but he had 22 explosive runs and 132 carries. 6% of his carries were explosive runs this year at Louisville. Um, it's certainly tempting, but I also do want to look at the edge rushers because – I'm afraid okay. there's going to, and we pick back to back. So I, I don't want to get too crazy here, but we, we do pick uh, at 170 after this. Um, I mean, to me, this is incredible value. You can have Jonah Ellis or yeah. Muhammad Kamara. Um, Sunday Anderson is, is interesting too. He's a little underpowered. Gabe Murphy is a good player at UCLA. Um, and then further down the list, there's, Braden McGregor is not bad. Jalen Harrell from Michigan. Um, this kid so, has been this kid's been everywhere and back. Ayabi Okianoma. He played at Alabama. He played at Michigan. He's played for like four schools, but he's a big time athlete. He might be a little bit of a troubled soul. But um, so there's a player named Xavier Thomas, and it might be a little too rich for him at a Clemson. Uh, I think Dane, Dane Brugler has him going in the fifth and sixth round. Um, the one issue with him is he has a lower leg injury, um, but he's super explosive when he's healthy, good burst, relentless effort, has good feet, quick feet. Um, him only being 6'2 and 244 may have some questioning him, but if you're looking at Mo Kamara, who is barely six feet, like you could lean towards an Xavier Thomas that is a little bigger. He can play standing up, he can play sitting down. Um, look kind of a low floor, high ceiling kind of guy, boomer bust that could be really good for you, but also just kind of crap out. Um, he is 25 years old, which may again concern players a little older than you know the average 22, 23 year old coming out of college. Um, I do like Xavier Thomas a lot. I, I, I took him two mock drafts to go on my show. Um, I think with Kosarek, he doesn't have to be a big piece. Um, I think he would do something that you know, with Floyd and Gris Matos, I think he could be something. Now you have to ask yourself, is this the area you want to take him? Um, but I do think the Niners will have the right towards him if he's healthy. Um, let's look at tight end though, because there's a lot of guys still there and we pick back to back. So um, tight end is interesting. Okay. So yeah. you have Cade Stover, Theo Johnson, Jared Wiley, Jaheim Bell, very athletic tight end, Florida State. They met with Eric Hall. I'll tell yes. you the guy that the two guys that intrigue me the most are the next two guys. Is it Tip? Tanner, Mc, <laughs> Tanner McLaughlin from Arizona. He was a wide receiver. And if you watch this guy, he's a tremendous receiver. And then um, I had Baldy on, as I said, a couple of weeks ago. Baldy told me that um, one of his personnel buddies says that Tip Ryman is far and away the best blocking tight end yes. of any in the entire draft. He says he's the guy that can, you can line him up in the line of scrimmage and he will block defensive ends. Yeah, So there's Tip Ryman. Dallin Holker is another really intriguing player out of Colorado State. A.J. Barner's of angular, tall tight end from Michigan. 
Isaac Rex is an interesting player. He's older. He went on his Mormon mission. But as a freshman, he led the nation with 12 receiving touchdowns. He was the number one receiving tight end. His dad played college football. Um, he's intriguing. And then I'm a big fan of this kid, Mason Pline out of Furman. He's like 6'6". He was a basketball player. Sterling, if you watch this kid's basketball tape, he looks like Aaron, Don Aaron, uh, Aaron Gordon. He's okay. just like this high riser dunker guy. And he's six foot seven and he's a mechanical engineering major. He's already graduated. He's got 10 and a half inch hands. Now he's not a, he's not a blocker per se. You're going to have to kind of, you know, work with him as a blocker, but you, you know, you know how athletic Aaron Gordon is and that, oh, yeah. and if you're that kind of an athlete and you're a mechanical engineering major and you have 10 and a half inch hands, um, to me, Pline is a real sleeper, but he's probably an undrafted free agent or a, you know, round seven guy. So I think now, because we go back to back, I'm not super high on Theo Johnson. Um, I know a lot of people like him. Some call him the second best tight end in the class. I, I don't love him that much. He's 6'6", 259 pounds, almost 260, freak athlete but he only had 34 catches in college this past year, which kind of concerns me. Um, he has build-up speed, doesn't have the instant off the line speed. Uh, he's an average blocker. He has room to improve there, but he feels more like a slot, like a really big slot than a tight end you put on the inline, line, which does concern me. Like, when I think of how Shanahan likes to use tight ends, it's not what Theo Johnson does well. Um, Cade Stover is somebody that... I like he's six three, almost two fifty. He's solid in kind of everything. He's not, you know, excellent in anything. Reliable, good at the catch point, can play special teams. Um, I think of the tight ends on the board, I would have them listed as Stover, Ryman, and then all as like the three I would point to. Um, I know all is coming off an injury. And he, I think he had a torn ACL this past year. Then he hurt his back two years ago. So there are concerns with his health. But as a receiver, he's really good. Uh, I think I would go tip Ryman knowing what San Francisco likes to do. Now, the draft board might say 190, and that might scare some people away. But uh, I just think, like, it's either Ryman to me or an edge rusher. And I would go... Uh, Xavier Thomas over Ellis or Mo Kamara, knowing the size they don't really have. So I would go with Tip Ryman here. Okay, so now you're going back to back. So right, right. They, they go 135, 136. You want to go edge now? I think that's the smartest place to go, unless there's like another corner, but I don't think anyone would stand out. You already got... Uh, Let's see. You already got Phillips earlier, or... Yeah. You know, Jalen Wright is a damn good running back. He's sitting right there. Um, as far as corner... Um, Chow Smith Wade, Smith. great ball I think, skills. I think he visited today with the Niners. Yeah, I mean, he's small. I mean, he's a 5'10 he corner. He's small, but he's got great ball skills. Uh, you also have some good receivers, Cowing, Baker, um, Joan Ellis, good rusher. I mean, the McCaffrey's still there if you wanted to satisfy Christian at the beginning of round five. <laughs> I don't know. Kenny Logan's a thumper. Uh, Garendo's still there. Aaron Casey's a hitter at linebacker. Um, do you do you like Elijah Taj Jones? The, Elijah Jones is interesting too. Okay. He's a good corner from uh, Boston College, and he's got good size six one one eighty five. And I know they they looked at him. Do I like Taj Washington? He's a good route runner. Yeah. Um. I I like other uh, receivers who I think are more dynamic, but I like the route yeah. running ability. He's only five nine one seventy four. Really, really tiny, really tiny. But he's also super reliable. Um. I know we're at pick 136. We don't pick until in the 170s again. Uh, I don't think there's going to be an edge rusher out there at 170 that we love. Um, and I know it might sound nuts, but I think, like, you, Jonah Ellis, to me, the size concerns, I think, would detour the Niners from taking him. Um, I think they seem like they here. want bigger guys in the wide nine at, right. off the end. He's like 245. So like, that's why I would lean towards Xavier Thomas. He's 6'2", 244. Like, I think that makes a lot of sense. All right. So I Let's think I'd go, I go Thomas. Okay, we'll go Thomas there. And now the thing's moving down the list. 
now we are in the last pick of the fifth round and now Minnesota's offering. This is interesting. Why would you yeah. not do this, right? Yeah, I You're, think I would you do only pick 176. <laughs> there Minnesota wants pick 176. They're off they've got the next pick and they're allowing you to move from 251 to 215. You got to do Which that. Which I think was your initial pick you had was 215. Right. So now so you're you getting get <laughs> you're getting your pick back. But you're only right. moving down one spot. In, in yeah. you're moving down one spot at the end of the fifth round. We'll see who they take. We'll accept it. They took Gabe Hall. So there you go. So now you're got the first pick of the sixth round. And let's see. You so far, just to re rehash, we have Johnny Newton, defensive tackle from Illinois, Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver from Florida, Andrew Phillips, the corner from Kentucky, Jaden Hicks, a safety from Wazoo. Bo Limmer, the center from Arkansas, Tip Ryman, the uh, tight end from Illinois, and Xavier Thomas, the edge rusher. We're still sitting here, and the Niner, there's four picks left. Um, they don't have a tackle. Yeah, let's let's go to tackle. There's one player I have in mind. I hope he's there. Uh, and he is, Christian Jones. Bang. Exactly who I wanted. There you go. Big kid from Texas. Yes. Uh, huge talent. Um, I like Christian Jones. He looked phenomenal in the one-on-ones. I, I don't. I don't think he did. He lost any of the one-on-one battles in Mobile that I saw during the during the Senior Bowl practices. Any All right. So now you're pick- that he has, I think, is so minor that it's like, yeah, like give him time in the NFL and he'll be fine. Now you're at pick two hundred three, and what would you like to do here? Jarvis Brownlee, the corner from Louisville, who's a Florida State transfer. He's there. Trey Taylor's a pretty good safety. Uh, Joe Milton, if you like a receiver. Dylan McMahon's not a bad uh, offensive lineman. Edifon Olafoshio is a super fast linebacker from Washington. Oh, by the way, today the Niners met with Sione Vaki, and Vaki's agent told me that they've met with him like seven or eight times. He's going to join me on Friday on the Krug Show. Awesome. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna chop it up. He's an Antioch kid who they've shown interest in. He was a running back who's kind of more the Niners like him, I think, as a safety and maybe as a return man. Yep. I but Vaki so. is an interesting player. He's listed at two oh five. They're picking at two oh three. His agent has kind of made it seem like it's very likely the Niners will take him. Hmm. Um but I don't know you're it's your it's your pick here. So you can pick anybody you want. Okay. Um, and then Brad Austin Ford Reed, that hilarious. quarterback I like, is there. Aeneas Smith is an awesome player. Now I'm a I'm an A and M fan. Aeneas okay. Smith is one of the most underrated receivers in the game. This Troy State running back Kamani Vidal did not fumble one time, and I think nice. in his entire career uh, at Shame Troy, he's, <laughs> he's like five nine, like two hundred eighteen pounds. Kamani Vidal. Uh, Ooh, Joseph, Josh, Josh Cephas, ah, <laughs> Josh Cephas is a really good player too. Uh, wide receiver. And there's Dejon Edwards. And I love Dejon Edwards, by the way, I'm a big Dejon Edwards fan. I think he's a terrific back. So there's good players here. I mean, this is like the people that say, Oh, you know, day three, there's, you know, somebody in the chat's like, Larry gets too excited about day three guys. Oh yeah. You mean like George Kittle or Brock Purdy or DJ Jones or, you know, there's a reason that Larry Juwan gets Jennings. excited. Juwan like, Jennings. Uh, there's a reason I get excited about day three guys because, you know what, day three guys oftentimes can play. And sometimes undrafted guys can really play. Um, so, you know. there are There is a thought in my head that Joshua Cephas in real life may go undrafted, but I really like him out of UTSA. Um, we've gotten a tackle. We've gotten a guard. I think this is the point where like Jaden Nicks earlier in the draft, you just pick the best player available. Um, I do want to look at Ezra Rusher again, though, just to keep an eye on it, because uh, let's see what's out there, because we did get Xavier Thomas. This episode is brought to you by Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer. Everything is more exhilarating when you're on your motorcycle. Just like your bike is more protected when you choose Progressive Motorcycle Insurance. They offer coverage for your bike, starting as low as $75 per year. And they keep things affordable with discounts like paid in full, multi-policy, and responsible driver. So raise your kickstands and get to quoting at Progressive.com to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. $75 premium is for state minimum coverage. Not available in D.C. Discounts not available in all states or situations. But- it's like starting pitching in baseball. You can never have enough. 
Especially this the kid from Grambling State is about 245, but he had a tremendous all-star game. Sunday and Anderson It's one of uh, the kids from the historical black colleges. He's a, he's a tremendous player. Taylor Upshaw from Arizona is Regan Upshaw's son. Okay. Uh, who played at Cal and played with the Raiders. Uh, he's interesting. Braden McGregor is a try-hard guy for sure. Jalen Harrell had a really good year for Michigan, but he's a little bit undersized. I think he's an off-ball linebacker rather than an edge rusher. You think so? I think so. Um, that's the list right there. I think Gabe Murphy from UCLA is still there. Um, Juvenor is not bad. Gabe Murphy, I think, just went. Yeah, he went. Gabriel Murphy at two. Yeah, he's. Oh no, Gabe Murphy. No, there you go. There he is, right there. There he is. You like Uh, Gabe Murphy? He's he's, he definitely tries hard. He doesn't have the strength that I would like. I think he was zero with percentile in arm length. So that's a big question mark. (laughs) Big question mark. Um, He doesn't have the length that would horrify me, but. 77.1 uh, run defense grade, 18.4% pass rush win rate. Um, He's a guy that maybe you sit here and say, you give him Chris Kosarek and see what he can do. Um, I don't think they'd take him, but I do think he's worth the conversation. Had an 87.6 pass rush grade this year at UCLA. Like just undersized for sure, but... He's a twin, right? Yeah. yeah. Grayson and Gabe are the, the two Murphy brothers. Yeah, I think Gabe's better. I think so too. They're they're very different in how they play and and their skill set. But um, like I'm someone that doesn't think San Francisco drafts a linebacker early. We already got a cornerback. You got a safety. Like ah oh man, like Jaden Cremuddy from Mississippi State. Like I like him a lot, but that's like the last pick of the draft, fifty one. Like I I couldn't see you taking him here. Um, yeah. Which brings He's a good back player. To, I mean, Mississippi State, by the way, is a great defensive. T- I mean, Chris Jones, uh, yeah. Simmons, Jeffrey Simmons, they probably are the two best ta- defensive tackles in the sport. They both come out of Starkville. So, uh, Crumity is another guy. He's big. He's athletic. I agree. He's raw, and he'd probably be a day set, day three, late day three pick, but I like yeah. him too. Um, let's go with receiver. I think receiver. Yeah. Receiver. Receiver's interesting. Now, Aeneas Smith, we do have a super here oh, from here Michael who says, Aeneas Smith is a great pass-blocking receiver, total fit for our offense. He does the dirty work well, punt returner, kick returner, special team skills too. This guy is like a legend in College Station. <laughs> um, he really is. I mean, Aeneas Smith is like, he's like really, really well known. Um I love him. I think he's a tremendous player. I think he would be a great pick. But, you know, it's it, it, there are other receivers. Um, let's take a look. You like know, Ryan Flournoy is there. And, like, he's, he's 6'1", fast. 200 pounds, 10-inch hands. He runs a 4'4". Like, he's, he's very fast. That he probably and then there's other guys, too. Bob Means, is, Bob Means is fast. Gould, Gold is fast from uh, Oregon State. Um you know, uh, David White from Western Carolina is really intriguing. Big 6'4 receiver. Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint. You know, a lot of people, I saw Rick uh, Spielman said that he thinks he's a day three sleeper. And then Tyler Harrell is just a ridiculous burner. <laughs> I mean, we're, I mean, he, and he's 200 pounds. He's not like he's a tiny guy. There's some, the, the receiver's a good spot late in this draft. Yeah. Uh, we pick at 211. I want to get the guy that I like here. Yeah. And that, is, like? and, and that is Joshua Cephas from UTSA. Um, okay. He's 6'3", 185. He had 547 yak yards last year. 52.1% of his yards were yak. If that doesn't scream, Kyle Shannon, I have no idea what does. Um, he's big. He's fast. Can make the first guy miss consistently. Um, excellent. When I talk about excellent blocker, Cephas is amazing in regards to blocking. Um, the route tree isn't great. There are some drops here or there, but in a year where Juwan Jennings could be gone after this season, like you have the archetype that could slide into there and maybe be something. Now that's wishful thinking, but I think Cephas makes a lot of sense for the Niners late in this draft. So you got um, Ricky Pearsall and Cephas being added to the receiving core. Right, which um, 
That's good. That's two good, really good players. And then you still have you have two more picks, two eleven and two fifteen. Um, let's see. All I'll tell you the I'll tell you one guy that I absolutely love, and I think he's still on the board. Let's see if he's there. Well, first of all, Vaki's there. We'll see. Uh, the the linebacker that I love is this kid, Kalen Deloach. I love Kari okay. Coleman from Ole Miss and Kalen Deloach from Florida State. Deloach is more of a sub package monster. But we're talking about a guy, a linebacker who's about 215 pounds, who, you know, this guy's got high character. You know, when 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 Florida State got left out of the playoffs, most of their players tucked tail and got out of there and didn't right. show up for the bowl game. This kid did. And he runs four four seven, you know, and he's a linebacker. He's a, he as I said, he's a sub package linebacker. Uh, but him and Kari Coleman from Ole Miss, I think, are two outstanding sub package linebackers. But what what do you think? I mean, two eleven, two fifteen. Is there a spot besides, you know, linebacker that you're looking for or you want me to highlight here? Yeah, so I think like these are the two spots in my last mock draft where I picked Cromuddy from Mississippi State, and then after that went Tatum Bethune from Florida State. Who they um, also just brought in. Right. And Bethune is someone that he's six foot, 200 and almost 30 pounds. He had a 30.0 pass rating when targeted last season at Florida State. Um, And I think Johnny Holland said, if you can cover, we'll take you. And there's a reason as to why they want to talk to him and visit with him. Like his coverage skills are stellar. He has four, six, nine speed, which isn't phenomenal, but as a linebacker, he can chase down a receiver if he has to at times. Um, he was also asked to play pass rusher at some times, which like don't understand why, <laughs> but he's really good in zone coverage. I think he would fit what San Francisco's defensive scheme wants out of their linebackers. Um, like I wouldn't go quarterback. You can maybe sell me on running back here. Like is Edwards still there from Georgia? Yes. Day one Edwards, Imani Bailey. They're all there. Kamani Vidal. I think good running backs. Dylan Johnson from Washington, who's 220 pounds, and he didn't play in the national championship game because he was hurt, but he is a terrific back too. So I think I would go with the money pick. And I know Austin Jones is there in San Francisco. I talked to him a couple of times. Was that that the pro day? I think you were there. I just interviewed I interviewed him at the pro day too. And he's he started at Stanford, went to SC. But I don't think he's quite on the level as of Dejon Edwards, to be honest. So like there's Michael Wiley there, who's I know is buried, but of the guys on the board still, Edwards is 5'10", 207 pounds, um, workhorse. Ran a 4'7", which isn't very fast, but averaged 5.4 yards to carry at Georgia. His last two seasons, not just last season, last two seasons at Georgia. Um, 20 touchdowns and just two fumbles when he was there. Uh, I would take Edwards here and give you a fifth running back in that room. Um yeah, then, no, I like that one. Dejon Edwards, you know, he's fast enough. Don't I'm not yeah. I'm never really too worried about the 40 times on these guys when they're running backs, when they when they're productive in the SEC. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. we, the guys the guys fast enough. The biggest knock on him is he's not a great pass blocker, which could piss Kyle Shanahan off a lot, but but I think you can avoid that with him and he probably wouldn't play in the first two years of his career anyways, knowing Kyle. But um Hmm. Let's see what else. So here we are, two fifteen, and there's still a lot of good players on the board. Yeah. I mean, a lot Cr- of good players on the board. Cromuddy's still there from Mississippi State. Vaki's still there from Utah. Um, hmm. I mean, well, I- Logan Lee was a good player at Iowa. I'm not sure how it's going to translate to the NFL, but he he was a very good player. Aeneas Smith, Vidal, um, a lot of great Cromedy. Cromedy. You know, Crumity's a big, he's, you know, yeah. he's a big boy. I mean, we're talking about, you know, and, and he's got movement ability. You're talking about 300 pounds. Um, you know, I mean, he's intriguing. He really so is. Crumity's what, 6'4", 301, round 6'3", 33-inch arms, 10 and a half inch hands. He's, he's raw, but he's got the body you'd want to play on the interior. Um, when I think of the Niners' interior defensive line, we already got Newton. We have Hargrave. Malik Collins is there probably for a year. Um, Jordan Elliott's there. Who knows for how long? The have Gibbons Jordan Elliott had great time. numbers against the run last year. I think he was the he sixth best defensive tackle in the league against the run. He did. That was pretty impressive. 
And then Cleo Davis is there, who I know many people have high hopes for, but he's always. I do, but I'm not. It hasn't happened yet. I mean, yeah. it's like, in, you know, how many more opportunities is he going to get? And then Givens was Cadillacing right next to Chase Young in the right. in the a- NFC Championship game. So I don't know how much you can depend on him. You know, so Crumity, like, you can never have enough defensive linemen. That's for sure. And like, if you told me you walked away with arguably on some people's big boards, the best defensive tackle in the entire class. And then at the last pick of what you have to play with, you got Kermuddy, who again is 6'4", 301 pounds, which can at least fill space and take up a body. He's raw, but you give him Chris Kosarek, like what could that become? I would like that. I, I like those prospects much more than Kalia Davis was two years ago. I like it much more than you know, previous picks they've had in the past. Like, I think Kermuddy would be, I don't want to say a steal, but he would certainly be someone you point to and say, wow, like, how did the NFL let Kermuddy fall that far to San Francisco? I mean, just on, you know, when I, when you watch him, you can see he's, you know, he's, there's, there's upside there. I mean, he's got yeah. quick feet. Um, he probably needs to get in a little bit better shape, but I mean, yeah. there's a lot to like there. All right, let's go Jaden Crumedy there and that will finish us off in the uh, in the mock and now it goes through the end of the draft and you know there's always the ability to sign guys after the draft and there's some damn good guys on the board so i would imagine that the niners will be very competitive for some of those guys but let's recap it we started with johnny newton at 31 came back with ricky pierce saw the wide receiver out of florida at 63 went with the corner at 108 jaden hicks the safety thumper at 124 Went with Bo Limmer, who I think could be a starter at center, maybe even as soon as this year, at 132. Got the best blocking tight end in the entire draft at 135. Uh, Xavier Thomas is an edge that you really like. I've got to watch film on him, but um, at 136. You went offensive tackle with Christian Jones, who's, you know, um, Big, huge-bodied guy with a lot of athleticism coming out of a big program. That's that's a nice one. Josh Cephas, a really talented receiver at 203. Dejon Edwards, the running back from Georgia at 211. And then defensive tackle, once again, Crumity at 215. I like it, man. I think it's a, it's a good-looking mock. How do, how do you feel about it? I feel good. I mean, there's a lot of players in the mock like Limmer, uh, Phillips, and Jones, and Crumity that I've taken a lot in, in previous mocks of my own uh so i'm comfortable with those guys like i'm i'm sure you have it as well i have 110 prospects on my phone ready to go to talk about so like when i see these guys i'm just like yes 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 um like seeing this mock and if this happens to occur uh next week i would like to believe the niners which they already are are probably the best roster in the nfl but they would leave saying sure you could have got an edge rusher or a tackle earlier and there's always this that and the other but the talent on the board that we've taken that fell to us or we stole from somebody else. I, I, I think there's plentiful, plentiful talent on this board. The only thing that I would consider doing, uh, this guy says Tyler Harrell ran four, two, four at his pro day. Jeez. Yeah. He's a burner. There's no question. Uh, and we'll see if he gets drafted, but the only thing that I would be on the look, lookout to do that we didn't do because it's not really available to us in this mock draft is that the Niners are one of three teams that was rumored to be interested in a trade for Buda Baker. Yeah. And I don't know that they can afford Buda Baker. I don't know. I don't know. You know, how do you tell Ayuka we don't have enough money and, you know, somehow pay Brock what he's due and then wind up with Buda Baker. But man, Buda Baker is such a difference maker. Um, you know, the Eagles re-signed Chauncey Gardner Johnson. I thought that was a great addition for them. I think Baker in a lot of ways would be the perfect secondary piece for the Niners. From what I'm hearing, his salary is going to make it so that the Cardinals probably wind up moving him for a fifth or a sixth round draft choice Jeez. on draft weekend. Okay. And I know it, there's a contract involved and he makes, you know, a sizable amount of money. But that would be the one, you know, if there's one thing I could do beyond what we just did, if I could figure out a way to get Buda Baker and maybe not take a safety, you know right. what I mean? 
um, and use that pick on somebody else or use the pick that you're going to, you know, tr- somehow trade for a Buda Baker. To me, that could make a, a very good draft elite if they could find a way to add that kind of playmaker on the back end. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's cap reasonable and that kind of thing. But the Niners, the Colts, and there was a third team that were all interested in Buda Baker, according to CBS Sports, about 10 days, two weeks ago. That's the one guy that I'd be like, you know what? Because I've talked to George Kittle about Buda Baker, and you know we all know what kind of player Buda Baker is. He could be that alpha that they're looking for in their secondary to kind of get them over the top. And if, if he's available and they can make it work cap-wise, man, I would do it. If they're going all in, do whatever it takes. That's all I got to yeah. say. Do yeah. whatever it takes. Awesome stuff, Sterling. Thanks for, I'm going to stop sharing right here and get us back on the board here. But um, thanks for coming on, man. Once yeah. again, tease your channel. Tell people where they can find you. There are a lot of people here in the uh, chat. Somebody who said, this is the best mock you've done. <laughs> um, and I, I love, you know, I, to me, this time of year, it is interesting to see who can really truly get granular on something like the NFL draft. Most people can't, and some people brag about the fact that they can't. But to me, it's it's really a, a good indicator of what kind of depth you have as a as a host when you can when you can talk about options in the sixth round of the NFL draft and actually have something meaningful. Uh, to share with the audience. So tell people where they can find your show and how often you stream. And, and you know, everybody, we got over a thousand people in the room uh, right now. You know, everybody, if you would do me a favor, do me a solid. If you hit like and subscribe over here on the Krug show, we would appreciate that. Go over to uh, Sterling's channel and give him a like and subscribe over on his channel and help build him to 40,000 subs. That'll be really cool, That'll but be great. <laughs> tell people, tell people, you know, what kind of content you put out and is it, you know, you're talking not just Niners, right? Niners, Warriors, Giants, Bay Area sports, right? Oh, no, we are full on red and gold till the day we go. It's Niners every single week. Oh, it's all, every Niners. Day. all Niners. We are 49ers access. It's all we're talking over there. Again, just released the quote unquote most accurate mock draft, which some picks occurred in this mock draft as well. So uh, we're talking Niners every single day with every single week. Um, again, you can find me at 49ers Access on YouTube, uh, on Twitter or X is 49ers underscore access. Instagram is 49ers dot access. Again, you just type in 49ers Access, you will find me somewhere in the ether on, on, on the internet. Last question before we call it quits. Is there a player that we did not mock to the Niners and um, that you just love, you know, I mean, everybody's got like one, one or two guys that it's like, you know what we didn't, it didn't work out. It wasn't the right number. It wasn't the right need this and that, but I am absolutely convinced that this player is going to be super special. Who's that guy for you? I know we talked about Michael Hall earlier, that's yeah. a player that he kind of gets buried behind Newton and Murphy. I know Tavondre Sweat has his off the field issues, but I can see him being a third round pick to somebody, probably Kansas City, maybe the Cowboys, maybe the Raiders, teams that don't mind some personal issues off the field. Um, I love me some Michael Hall, but Mo Kamar, we also mentioned, like he doesn't fit what the Niners want to do, but Mo Kamar is just awesome. Like in five years at Colorado State, he had 45 and a half tackles for losses, 30 and a half sacks, and five forced fumbles. Like, you talk about production, he's the epitome of production. Um, I don't know what he'll be in the NFL, but if that size doesn't play a factor for him, Mo Kamara could be really special. And I'm really excited to see what he does at the next level. Yeah, I love Mo Kamara. Kind of reminds me of uh, Hugh Douglas. Okay. Yeah, if you remember Hugh okay. Douglas back in the day. For me, it's Blake Corum. I, I just I love the more, <laughs> the more I watch Blake Corum, the more I think, you know what? This kid has got the footwork, the explosion, the power, the speed, um, the character. I, you know, to me, he reminds me a lot of Emmett Smith in that Emmett Smith was absolutely this high character, 
running back for the Dallas Cowboys. He kind of was the heart and soul of that dynasty. You know, they had Aikman and they had Irvin and Novacek and athletes on defense and Jimmy Johnson and Eric Williams. And, they, you know, they had other guys. But Emmett was kind of like the heart and soul of that dynasty. And I think Blake Corum reminds me of Emmett in that he's just, he's, he, you know, he scores tons of touchdowns. He's great in short yardage. Uh, he's got quick feet. He's just, you know, he's this great charitable guy, but he's also this incredible gotcha kind of a competitor. Um, I love Blake Corum. And I know people are like, the, the Niners don't need another third round running back. And I don't even know if he'll make it to the third round. And you can't take him in the second round if you're the 49ers, if you have Christian McCaffrey. But I love I love Blake Corum. And if they somehow wound up with Blake Corum, I would be doing absolute cartwheels. I just see him as a truly great difference-making back who's going to be wearing a Super Bowl ring someday. So, okay. so there you go. And I love Kamara, too. And I love Michael Hall. Those are all, all great ones. Uh, but for me, Blake Corum just seems like... I don't know. To me, he's, there's something really special about that player. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's a ten, from a tiny town in Virginia. And um, who knows? Who knows? Some people feel like he's uh, an overrated player, that he was, you know, kind of shown to be better than he was behind a Michigan offensive line that has multiple guys that are going to be drafted and J.J. McCarthy and, you know, all the talent they had on that roster. But I cannot see him as the key to the, the glue piece of the uh, Wolverines. And if, uh, you know, when he goes, I'll be like, oh, and I really hope he doesn't go to somebody really good, you know, because I just see, to me, he seems like the kind of guy that's going to wear Super Bowl rings. Um, awesome stuff, Sterling. Great stuff, man. We appreciate it. Maybe after the draft, we can get you back on and and uh, and kind of review what the Niners did and, and look ahead to training camp. But uh, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Larry Kruger, for having me on. And also want to let all of you know that NFL Mock Draft 4.0 drops this Monday. It'll be my final mock draft before the NFL Draft next Thursday. I want to ask you kindly to like, share, subscribe to not only myself, but also Larry. You can find Larry at The Krug Show. You can also like and subscribe to me and the show here at 49ers Access, whether it's on Instagram 49ers.access, Twitter, 49ers underscore access, or you can leave a like, share, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and you can subscribe to us on YouTube. And look, folks, the NFL Draft is one week away. Less than one week away. And I can tell you this, until the next time we talk, I only ask you one thing. Stay faithful.